Phase two trial results from a COVID-19 vaccine candidate developed in China have found that the vaccine is safe and induces an immune response. The results were published Monday in the medical journal The Lesset, providing data from a wider group of participants than the phase one trial, which was published in May. China's vaccine, the CanSino candidate, is one of a handful of vaccines that have shown some promise in early human testing. Phase one and phase two trial results from a vaccine developed by researchers at the University of Oxford and British-Swedish company AstraZeneca was also released on Monday. Other vaccine candidates include U.S.-based company and Germany-based companies in partnership with American drug maker Pfizer. What do these results mean in our fight against COVID-19? I'm joined in Washington, D.C. by Dr. Eric Ding, epidemiologist and senior fellow with the Federation of American Scientists. We also have with us Dr. Wu Zhiwei, joining us via Skype in Nanjing, China. He's director of the Center for Public Health Research at the Medical School of Nanjing University. Uh, Dr. Wu, let me go to you first. Uh, the CanSino trials were conducted in Wuhan with over 500 participants from many age groups taking part. Uh, how encouraged uh, should we be uh, about the phase two results? I think it's very encouraging that uh, CanSino vaccine candidate induce a strong immune response and also you don't see severe side effect. And also uh, this is, you know, basically confirm uh, what we found in the uh, phase one clinical trial, which is a much smaller group. But now in the phase two clinical trial, you have a much broader uh, age range and, and also, you know, including some um, uh, uh, participants who are actually 55 years old or older. So this is actually a significant uh, uh, progress uh, for the vaccine. Um, uh, study. Uh, I think, you know, this is a very encouraging and uh, we are looking forward to the phase three uh, efficacy trial. Uh, you know, Dr. Wu, some scientists uh, are concerned that a large part of the population uh, may already be immune, so uh, a vaccine would not be as effective. Uh, I mean, why is the Chinese team still keen on using that? Uh, how do you look at that argument? Well, I think, you know, um, let me just put it in a way that I think people are uh, concerned about uh, the vector used in the vaccine, which is the so-called recombinant adenovirus 5, which is actually, I think, quite a um, percent of people may have a pre-existing immun immunity against these vectors. But this is uh, something actually... Um, has been scientifically tested in various different vaccine development, which is uh, uh, showing that which shows that you know it's a it's a highly efficient in driving the immune response, and also it's a safe in uh, various different uh, testing uh, 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 you know uh, uh, trials. Uh, so I think this is something actually which is uh, highly valuable uh, in terms of vaccine development and, uh, you know, you, you have something which uh, has been tested in human. So I, I think the, the results from these two clinical trials is that still this is a very, very useful approach. All right, um, Dr. Ding, let me go to you. Um, participants in the Oxford um, AstraZeneca trial were between the age of 18 and 55. It did not inc contain those uh, aged between 55 or older uh, who are uh, particularly vulnerable to COVID-19. How much does this limit the scope of their findings? Well, I think it's still a phase two. So phase two is, you know, we're trying to find general efficacy for in immune response. Um, and so I think it does still provide enormous evidence. And also notably in the Oxford uh, Jenner Group's uh, vaccine, they were also trying to see what is the effect of a booster. Uh, while that booster was not tested in the, in the Wuhan uh, 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 vaccine that was published the same day. So they were looking at different kind of things. And I think it shows that um, they also show that it has both effects on T cell uh, in, uh, immune response as well as a humoral B cell res antibody response. So I think they're, they're looking at different things and having uh, d different vaccines look at different dimensions I think is really key as we move forward. And in the larger uh, tr phase three trial, I think they will have older populations uh, and it's already underway in Brazil. Eric, I mean, uh, what further researchers do you think are needed uh, to prove uh, it can generate enough antibody? And also, you know, over 90% of volunteers were white. Uh, 
uh, while roughly 5% are Asian and fewer than 1% mm -hmm. are black. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I mean, this demographic makeup. Yeah, I think, you know, there definitely definitely needs more research in, in more different kinds of population. And this is why the gender groups uh, phase three is underway in Brazil. They want to test it in a completely separate population. And in terms of e efficacy, you know, uh, phase two is trying to test the immune response. Does it elicit immune response? And it does for two different uh, mechanisms, the, the, uh, the cellular immunity as well as the humoral immunity with the antibodies, with the T cells and the B cells. So that's actually really good. And ultimately, phase three wants to see, does it prevent disease and serious illness? And I think we will get more answers. And right now, just because it's a phase two is small, limited to, which by the way, limited is a thousand, which is double the size of the Wuhan study, I think we will find more answers soon. Oh, Dr. Wu in Nanjing, I mean, data show that uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine caused side effects like fever, headaches, um, muscle aches uh, in about 60%, 60 percent, 60 percent of patients. Uh, all of these side effects were deemed mild or moderate. Uh, and are resolved later on um, during the course of the study. How worried should we be about these side effects? Well, actually, uh, based on what I have seen uh, from the uh, publication, the um, you know the side effects like fever and the headache and the muscle aches, uh, I think they're pretty mild and uh, should be uh, pretty well you know tolerated. The other thing is that you know uh, those uh, um, those uh, side effects actually uh, will be gone away uh, within just a few days. So basically, it's a not a long-lasting side effect, and you don't really see any severe cases reported. So uh, you know, uh, to me, this is a uh, pretty good news because. Uh, um, for vaccines, or for vaccines particularly, you know, driven by uh, recombinant adenovirus, 5 virus, actually, uh, this is uh, uh, pretty good. I, I think it, uh, we shouldn't be worried about it too much about this right now. Uh, Eric, um, I mean, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about the big picture. Uh, there's little doubt that uh, the United States is currently, and unfortunately, the epicenter of COVID-19. Uh, I mean, its cases uh, nearly tripled. Uh, since May, it only took two months uh, for the U.S. to do so, unfortunately. Uh, how are people over there uh, balancing reopening the economy, which is getting very political, and uh, making sure that people are safe uh, in the absence of a vaccine? Well, right now, the U.S. is in the middle of a crisis. We're uh, approaching, uh, you know, we're, we passed 3.8 million um, cases. Uh, and also in terms of deaths, we've passed 140,000 uh, deaths in the U.S. And it's not slowing down. Deaths are also rising, um, unlike what Trump is trying to say, that deaths are not. Um, and it's, it's rising very quickly in the southern states. Hospitals are very much overloaded in the southern Sunbelt states. And this is, and the hospitalization has actually passed the peak in April, so the overall in the U.S. So the U.S. is definitely suffering a tremendous deal and the economic balance right now is a lot of the southern governors which are conservative aligned with uh, Trump do not want to close down and there's huge hesitation they don't even want to do mask mandates and meanwhile the northeast states and the, w the western uh, pacific states which are not loyal to Trump are much more willing to do with shutdowns and mask mandates so I think politically we're in a very fractured situation and there's very poor leadership for these states that are solving, having really large epidemics. I mean, Dr. Wu, uh, what would be your advice to uh, public health experts, also our viewers in, in North America, particularly in the U.S., about uh, how they can best contain this uh, epidemic? Well, actually, it just the need a very strong leadership and uh, recognize the severe, uh, severity of the pandemic. And also, I think it, they're critical to listen to the uh, you know um, public health experts. They actually they provide a very very good um, advice. And also, I, I remember that in, in early days they generated um, a, a, a number of very good recommendations on how people should you know behave and interact and how to you know prevent. Um, the, the virus from sp spreading. I, I think those are excellent the guidelines, but uh, you, you need the leadership and to implement those guidelines to prevent the further you know, worsening of the, uh, the pandemic. 
Well, Eric, finally we have about one minute left. Uh, let me ask you about, uh, you know, um, the politicization of COVID-19, unfortunately. Several Republican lawmakers uh, grilled U.S. drug makers on whether or not uh, they have Chinese suppliers in their production for, you know, a drug, a cure for COVID-19, uh, whether or not any of their materials came from China. How do you look at this? Yeah, I think uh, global su supply chains are really disrupted, especially with PPEs, which we know come from China, and the U.S. and all the individual states are shipping. So I think we need to work together because in certain ways, uh, you know, we cannot ramp up everything here in the states. And, you know, there needs to be international co cooperation, especially when fighting the pandemic. To be fractured and, and political, have infighting, is just not helping whenever this is a pandemic that's a crisis of humanity, not of any single country. True. Hopefully, um, uh, policymakers uh, will heed your advice. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, my thanks to Dr. Eric Ding, epidemiologist and uh, senior fellow with the Federation of American Scientists, and also Dr. Wu Zhiwei, director of the Center for Public Health Research at the Medical School of Nanjing University.